everybody, welcome back to another very exciting episode of the Photoshop Training Hour. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to select and adjust specific colors in Photoshop. As always, this stream is sponsored by our good friends at MSI Computers. And today, I will have my uh, Creator Z16P laptop out. And this is a laptop that I use on the go. And this is the Creator Z, uh, Z16 laptop. And I'm going to go into Photoshop and we're going to get started right away. The image that we're going to work with today, as I said, this stream is all about selecting specific colors in Photoshop and making them black and white. And we're going to use five different techniques for that. So this is the end result for all five techniques, but I'm going to show you the five different ways that we're going to get there. There's a lot of ways of doing the same thing in Photoshop. And today I'm just going to give you different uh, techniques and tricks so that you can apply to your projects and you can decide which one will work best for the project at hand. So we want to make the background black and white, but keep the orange backpacks in color. How do we do that? Well, Here's a trick that a lot of people probably don't know. What I'll do is create the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And from the hue and saturation adjustment layer, you probably know that there is this tool right here, the direct selection tool. I can click on that and hover over the image and click and Photoshop will select the colors that I clicked on in this gradient here. You can see that it mainly selected the oranges. If I desaturate the image, it will, of course, desaturate the orange colors. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually flip that selection so that we select everything else but the orange. In other words, we'll make everything black and white and keep the orange backpack. To do so, <clears throat> what I need to do is look at my gradient here. You can see my gradient here on the top right. And I can click and drag these sliders to adjust them accordingly. And looking at the numerical values here, you'll see that I have 315 degrees is where this adjustment starts. And at 15 degrees is where it ends. So I can just flip those. I can the area where I had the previous one. And I can click and drag this one to the left and adjust it accordingly. The values don't need to match exactly. If, if they do, then that'll be just a exact inversion, but you can adjust them accordingly. So notice that as I drag these sliders, now I've inverted the selections of the color that I selected. So instead of selecting that specific color, now I'm selecting everything else, which in turn leaves the black, uh, the backpacks in orange. And I can of course click and drag these sliders to fine tune them accordingly. But the point is that with this adjustment layer, you can flip the color that you selected just by clicking and dragging on those sliders and then pushing them, pushing them all the way to the end until they come back. And obviously you can still see a little bit of the foliage selected here, some of those flowers. So of course I can spend a little more time fine tuning those smaller details until I only keep the backpack. So that's a trick that a lot of people don't know. Um, let me know in the comments if you enjoy this first trick. If you did, click on that like button and let me know if it was new to you. Let me say hello to the chat. I have a lot of people watching from Malaysia, Greece, Africa, from Trinidad and Tobago and Romania. Thank you so much. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm streaming from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area in San Ramon, California. Okay, so let me go back into this project here and we're now going to look at a different way of selecting colors. So in this case, we were able to select the color that we wanted and then do an inversion. And obviously this didn't use a layer mask. Now we're going to use a technique that requires a layer mask. To do so, I'm going to disable this layer. And again, I'm gonna select this original layer and I can go into the select menu and choose color range. The color range command allows you to click over the image and then add colors to add to that selection. So you can probably guess what's gonna happen here. I can click on this eyedropper tool, click on the backpack, and then click on the add to selection button here. And I'm adding the oranges of the backpack to my selection as you see there. And I can adjust the fuzziness to select more colors or fewer colors depending on what you want. And you can see the result, you can click on the image button to see the image there. And you can also do a grayscale preview on the actual image if you like, a black mat, white mat, and a quick mask. In this case, maybe 
The black mat probably gives us the best view for what we want. And we can, of course, keep fine tuning the details on the image to add or subtract more colors if need be. So I can just click over directly over the image. I don't have to use this preview box to add or subtract colors. I can then press OK and Photoshop will create a selection based out of the pixels I selected. Now, I'm going to stop it here and actually go back for just one second because you might have noticed that on the selection, we actually selected pixels that were outside of the backpack just because the pixels were very similar, like on the flowers and the rocks and all of that. So what you can do instead, and I'll press Control D on Windows, Command D on the Mac to deselect, is what you can do instead is create the la select the lasso tool and just make a selection around the pixels that you really want to select, like so. That way, I don't have to worry about the flowers and the foliage. And once I have that selection active, I can go into Select and choose Color Range. And Photoshop should only look at the pixels in, in those areas. And I can press OK. And now the ground and the other areas are not selected, only the pixels that were inside of that original selection. And once you have your selection active, you can go into the Hue and Saturation Adjustment layer and desaturate the image. But this is giving us the opposite of what we want, right? We want the background to be black and white. So we can select the layer mask and click on invert. You can also press Control I on Windows, Command I on the Mac to invert, totally up to you. Some of you probably have noticed that the selection wasn't perfect. It missed a few areas like here, and that's okay. You can select the brush tool, and with the brush tool, you can paint with white to reveal the effect. So it will make the image uh, black and white, or you can tap on the X key to make your foreground color black and you can hide the effect, which will bring back the original color. So all you have to do is just fine tune any imperfections that your image had. So this is another way of getting the same thing. Again, there's a lot of ways in Photoshop, a lot of ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. I'm just trying to show you all these different techniques so that you find the one that works best for you and the project at hand. We got 49ers Lakers fan from San Diego in the house. San Diego is one of my favorite cities in the whole world. There's a really good restaurant there that I enjoy. I think it's called, um, I think it's called Town and Country, if I'm not mistaken. Is it Town and Country? Pretty sure it's Town and Country in San Diego and one of my favorite restaurants. Um, saludos de Argentina. Awesome. We got people from Argentina. Hello from Greece. Thank you so much. Um, there's a question in the chat. How would you get the black and white more dramatic? Good question. So what you can do in this case to make the black and white more dramatic is you could add, for example, there's a lot of ways, right? Um, one example will be using the curves adjustment layer. And then you can just, you know, do something like that with more contrast. And then you can select the layer mask from the layer above and drop it on this layer as well so that the curves adjustment layer doesn't affect the actual um, orange of the backpack and you can adjust that accordingly. Another way that you can um, create more um, drama in the image in the uh, black and white version is uh, another trick. Let me show you another trick. You can go into the black and white adjustment layer which will make the image black and white, right? And then you can just adjust the original colors by dragging this the slider. See how I'm making the, the backpack black and, you know, I can come in and adjust the, you know, uh, ground and the flowers and all that. This is the background. And maybe I can adjust the sky like this. And obviously this is subjective. This is for the example, right? We'll, we'll just assume that that makes the perfect uh, image. Well, when I enable the hue and saturation adjustment layer again, the color is not going to come back because the black and white adjustment layer is adjusting that. You can just copy the layer mask on here and that should bring the color back. And in reality, you don't even need this adjustment layer, right? Because this adjustment layer already took care of that. So there you go. By asking your question that I'm going to show you, I just showed you another method that I wasn't even thinking about showing you, which is the black and white adjustment layer. Um, here's the, This is what I had in mind when I said that I was going to show you guys a trick with the black and white adjustment layer. You can change the blending mode from normal to luminosity and the color comes back. 
and then you can just adjust the brightness values of those same colors, but the color's still there. So you don't desaturate the image. You keep the colors and then you can use the sliders to control the brightness of that layer. So I hope that made sense. I know that was a little quick. Let me know in the chat if I need to go back. And if you're watching the recording, simply rewind the video. Cool. <clears throat> <laughs> Matt Roberts said, hello, Jesus, I'm happy I made it. I was watching a police chase of a passed out drunk Amish man in a horse and a buggy. That sounds very interesting. Maybe more interesting than this video. I don't know, but thank you for watching. Um, awesome. You got people from the mountains of North Carolina. Yes, uh, say Trey just asked a question your, or a comment. They made a comment, which is the next thing that I'm going to show. So might as well address that. So the, the comment was, can you do the same thing in Camera Raw? Um, yes, you can do the same thing in Camera Raw. And that was the next thing on my list. So if you go, um, I have a smart object. So you can convert a layer into a smart object by right clicking on it and selecting convert um, to smart object. And this icon here on the bottom right, that little, little guide right there, that little square thing is letting you know that this layer is a smart object. A regular layer doesn't have that icon, so that means it's a pixel layer. So when you have a smart object, you can go into Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter, and from the Camera Raw Filter, you can do something very similar. You can go into this icon here. This is the masking. I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing here. Let me, why did the color grading thing come up? I'm not sure, but let me do that again. I can click on this icon here to bring up the, the masking options. And we have something called color, uh, color range, which is very similar. You can click on color range and then you can click on the color that you want to affect. There's an overlay right now. You see this checkbox here is applying an overlay. We can change the overlay to a different color if we want, um, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to keep it as is. And what I'm going to do is just simply desaturate the layer, right? I'm going to desaturate it. So, with the layer desaturated, um, I can just click and you can see how Photoshop affects or camera affects the area that I click on. But this is the cool trick. If you hold the shift key, you can click and drag and just make a selection out of like a range of pixels. So now I'm affecting all the pixels in that range. So that's um, one way to go about it. And actually, let me disable the overlay. That way is more clear. So I'll, I'll do that again. I had the overlay enabled. So when you click, you just basically select the pixel that's directly below it. I can hold shift and add a second point like so. You know, I'm just adding points, but better yet, I think this works much better, is you can just click and drag and just make a selection out of like multiple pixels, not just the ones that you clicked on, and you can just adjust it accordingly like so. Now, um, let me just add a few more pixels. There we go. Now, the thing here is that we want the opposite, right? So we can invert the selection. So now the backpacks are orange again, and we have a little bit of green and other colors in the image. That's just the way it works. It selected more colors than we wanted to. Apparently, they were close enough and similar enough. The camera raw thought they were the same colors, but no problem. What we can do is we can go back into the edit menu here and under the color mixer. We can just reduce the saturation of the greens, the saturation of, you know, every color that remained. I guess this yellow, yeah, this yellow. It's it's the ground, and maybe even the orange. No, the orange is the backpack, so we we don't want to mess with that one. Let's see if the red makes any difference. Nope. So we don't want to adjust the red or orange, but we can bring down the saturation of all the others, and that gives us the same result. Now. There's something else that you can do. So, so what we just did is we basically just use the um, one single mask with color range to keep the mat, to keep the backpack, and then it left a little bit of the background, and we use the color mixer to get rid of the remaining colors. Another thing that you can do, and um, I guess I can uh, reset to open, so I can bring back my original settings without that mask. So I just did a reset. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can start with a brush and you can just paint with the brush. I'm just going to paint over the image here. I'll disable the overlay and I'll bring the saturation down so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to paint away the backpack like so. I'm going to paint this side as well. 
and this side, right? There we go. And I can um, now go into the brush and invert it. There you go. That gives us pretty much the same result. And I can now, um, I can now go and do a, a color range and just select those pixels that remain. See that? So I'm, I'm still doing the opposite and I got to be careful that I don't select um, the color of the backpack, but I think you get the idea. Um, I'm just using the same technique, but in a different way. So now I did it all with masking rather than going with the color mixer. It, it all depends, again, so many different ways of doing the same thing. It all depends on what you're trying to do, what your project requires, what the image looks like. So it's just doing the same thing using the same tool in a different way. I'll press OK and you can see the result. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat. You um, just want to say yeah, you're welcome to all the people who are saying thank you. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate all the sweet comments. I wish I could read them all out loud, but I there's a lot. Um, how did I copy the properties of one mask to another just by dragging the mouse or that you hold a key while dragging and dropping? So I believe that you are talking about the layer mask. So you can copy a layer mask by holding Alt on Windows, Option in the Mag, and dragging it to another one. And in this case, it'll ask me to replace it. I'll click Yes. And now I copied the mask from one layer to another. So holding the Alt key and dragging it will copy the mask. And here's another trick. If you hold Alt and Shift and drag, it inverts and copies the mask at the same time. So see how this one is black? Alt shift on Windows, Option shift on the Mac, click and drag on the mask, it copies and it inverts it at the same time. Cool. Um, this doesn't look like Photoshop. No, nope, this is Photoshop. This is Photoshop 2022. Um, yes, yeah, so all the streams are recorded so you can come and check them out later. Magnetic Creatives, don't worry about it. If you miss something, everything is recorded. And before we continue, I just have to give uh, shout outs to our sponsors at MSI Computers. This is the MSI Creator ZZ, uh, Z16 laptop. is a laptop that I'm currently using on the go, the laptop that I use on my presentations. It's a powerful, fast computer. It uses the latest 12th gen Intel Core i9 processor. It has a powerful GPU, uh, the GeForce RTX 30, which allows you to edit 8K HDR raw video. You can work with extra large 3D models, of course, Photoshop as well. It has a 16 by 10 display, which gives you a little more room at the bottom for your layers or anything else that you might need. It's just more space as you work. It's also touch sensitive and it comes with the MSI pen, so you can do retouching um, just by painting directly over the screen. It's got fantastic color representation. It's Kalman certified. It's just a fantastic laptop. And by the way, thank you for every to everyone who's uh, commented uh, saying that they purchased an MSI laptop and they're happy with it. So you can see some of the older streams people have been leaving comments about the laptop. So thank you so much to all of you. Uh, thank you uh, for MSI for sponsoring this video and all the other episodes of the Photoshop Training Hour. If you're not familiar with MSI, there is a link in the description that shows you the Reader's Choice Award for 2021 laptops and tablets and MSI computer ranks uh, with Apple tied for first place for overall satisfaction. So on the PC side, they're very reliable. So make sure that you check them out. The link to the description, the link to the laptop is in the description, the MSI Creator Z16P. Thank you so much, MSI, once again. Awesome. So here we are back uh, in Photoshop and we're gonna continue working with uh, selecting color in Photoshop. So let me just make sure I cover everything I had on my notes. Um, we talk, Okay, cool. The next thing that we're gonna cover is a older tool in Photoshop that it's actually very powerful and a lot of people might not use it anymore because there's a lot more fancier AI tools and you know as much as I think AI is great it's sometimes easier to use the older methods that just gives you better results again 
it's another tool in your tool belt. So just use the tool that is most appropriate for the task at hand. So the tool that I'm referring to is, I think, I don't know if it's the oldest selection tool in Photoshop, but one of the oldest selection tools in Photoshop, which is the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool allows you to click and select a color like so. See how I'm clicking and just selects the oranges. By default, you'll have a tolerance of 32. The lower this number is, the fewer colors you select when you click. As you can see, I'm just clicking just a little tiny baby point. And the higher no the higher the number this is, the more it selects. It basically selected all the colors, right? So 32 is a good starting point. You can click and see how that does. Maybe I can add this one to 50 and click again and see if it does a better job. You can also hold shift and click and add to the selection, which is what I usually do. I'm just holding shift and adding to the selection. Another important option in this tool is the sample size. Point sample simply mean, means that Photoshop is going to look at the point that you clicked on directly. And by point, I mean pixels. So if I zoom in all the way in, each of these little squares are pixels. So when I use this tool and I click, Photoshop will just sample that one specific pixel. I usually don't like doing that. Instead, for something like this, I like to do a five by five average. To be frank with you, in this case, it really doesn't make a difference. There's not a lot of noise in this image. If you had a lot of color noise in your image, then that might be an issue where there might be like random, you know, cyan pixels or whatever. But in this case, it doesn't make a difference. But generally speaking, I like to leave the sample size at five and then just uh, click and let me see the result. And it, it does a good job. And I can probably go higher, to be frank with you, on the tolerance. Maybe I can go to like 70 and I can just click and that does pretty good. So I can now hold shift and just click on these areas to select them. Another thing that I recommend doing for selecting a specific color on an image like this one where we have a, you know, the orange on this backpack, the orange on the second backpack and the orange on this third one is that they're not all, all these oranges are not touching. They're in different areas. So make sure that you uncheck contiguous. So Photoshop will select the same colors that you apply, but they don't have to be touching uh, to the area where you clicked on. So when I click on here, notice that all the backpacks get selected and I can just continue holding shift and clicking and just adding more to my selection. In this case, now I realize that maybe my tolerance was a bit high because I selected a bit of the grass. So I can just bring my tolerance down. Maybe I can do something like 40 or something and then try again. So, you know, as long as I don't select the grass, um, I'm doing okay. And I can just click and make sure that I'm selecting all the pixels that make up the backpack. That looks pretty good. I can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Press Control I on Windows, Command I on the Mac to invert. And that inverts the selection and I can just bring the saturation down. And it gives me the result that we've been uh, achieving with all the other selection methods. Let me know in the chat if you're enjoying these tips. Hit that like button, leave a comment below. I would love to see what your thoughts are on these techniques. There's another tip that I wanted to show you guys, and this is a channel base selection. So we're going to select now the orange by looking at the channels in the image. And you can just click on the individual channels, and you can see what has the most contrast between the foreground and the background. Um, in this case, the channel pool is going to be probably the, the worst result because, as you can see, the sky is very similar to the backpack. And if I um, toggle through the different channels, they, they all look pretty much the same in terms of contrast. So a channel pool is something that works great in some cases. In this case, it wouldn't work so great. If we just focus on like on a specific area like this backpack or this bag here in the front by the handles, then we can probably do a good job there, but it wouldn't be such a great job for everything else in the image. So we were just focusing on this area. I can just do a quick loose selection with the lasso tool, right click, select inverse, fill with black, which is my foreground color. So I can hold alt and backspace on windows, option delete on the Mac. And I can just now focus on this area. And by the way, I duplicated the channel, that's important. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, apply image and from here just make sure you have multiply selected to make the image darker and the opacity at 100% works. Notice how it just makes the darker pixels darker and I can just keep doing that a couple times until 
I pretty much isolate the white areas. And in this case, I don't know if I want to do it that one other time because I'm actually making some of the backpack darker now. So at this point, I can select the dodge tool, which makes pixels brighter and then just brighten pixels this way, like so. And I can even paint if I wanted to. I can paint with white and I'm going to paint with white to select these pixels. And like I said, in this case, a channel, a channel tool might not give me the best results since we've already looked at tools that give us great results. But a channel pool sometimes is the only option you have. So it's a good tool to have in your tool belt. And I'm going quickly here, obviously. But basically, I'm now painting with white in the areas that I want to keep. Like so. And I can paint with black as well. And I'm going quickly, as I mentioned. I can also go into image adjustment levels and just makes more contrast in the image. As you can see, there's no real like recipe to get this right. You just have to think of what will get you the result that you want, what will make the areas darker when you need them, areas brighter when you need them, and just work that way. So when you're done, you can hold the control key, click on the red copy thumbnail. By the way, notice the keyboard shortcuts here on the right hand side. If you hit control seven, uh, control like five, it won't select the actual channel. It'll move to it. But if you add the alt key and then press that uh, keyboard shortcut, then it'll load it as a selection. So in this case, I held alt control six. That's option command six on the Mac. So you can load channels really quickly by just adding that keyboard shortcut control alt and then whatever number you see here, command option and the number you see here. And I can now go into my layers panel, create a human saturation adjustment layer, control I, command I to invert, and then just, just desaturate the layer. And that gives me that result there. So again, a channel pool is a fantastic way of making selections. It, might, it may not seem that way in this case, but it's one of the methods that I use the most. Actually, a shorter episode of the Photoshop Training Hour. I'm actually traveling very soon. So I decided to just do a short episode for you guys today so that there was an episode this week instead of waiting for next week. By the way, before I forget, make sure that you check out my uh, YouTube shorts on YouTube. I'll place a link in the description. They're basically 30 to one minute Photoshop tutorials. I have a playlist and I can place that link in the chat now for the people watching live. But for the people who are watching the recording, I'll place a link below in the description so that you can check out all my 30 second to one minute Photoshop tutorials. I think you'll really like them. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you again very, very soon.